What's good, y'all? Your boy Ross back at again with another video. So I'm gonna check out 10 times WWE wrestlers couldn't fake it on camera. Now this should be a good one. Definitely want to check out these instances where even the wrestlers, like you know what, maybe uh, uh someone says something like the infamous Sammy coming up with the that's not Usi line and and uh, you know Roman having to kind of like turn away and smirk because it, it was funny and you know sammy was doing that a lot with the bloodline at that time just making them laugh you know or somebody mess up something or it's a botch and it's actually kind of hilarious you know it's kind of hard to stay in character especially when you know you know you're, you're you, you got certain things that's happening and you're trying to stay true to your character but sometimes you might want to crack so i'm sure there may be some of those instances in there but appreciate all love support y'all showing on the channel let's get right into it bro couldn't hide how they really felt. Number 10, Ricochet Raw 2020. A 2020 looked to be the year in which Ricochet would receive a main event push. Ricochet was booked to face Brock Lesnar uh, at the Super Showdown yeah. pay-per-view for the WWE title. Yet in an unexpected twist, this is where WWE will begin to lose faith in the talented star. The match would be a complete squash and following the loss, Ricochet began to lose matches on a weekly basis. On the March 2nd, 2020 edition of Raw, Ricochet would lose clean to Riddick Moss and fans in attendance took to social media to comment on how disappointed, frustrated and angry Ricochet looked. The former US champion would even throw his wrist tape down on the ground and would even head to the locker room without even looking or acknowledging the live crowd, which was a clear sign that Ricochet was completely over WWE's atrocious booking. Ricochet's negative emotion was shared by the fans at home as WWE's YouTube upload of his match that is kind of messed up. Over 6,000 dislikes. Sheesh. Number nine, Jim Ross. W and here's the thing. And here's the thing about that. It's understandable. I do think Ricochet is a very talented person. Um, and, you know, he deserved uh, a much better run, you know, especially in the, the you know, even in the Triple H years, uh, Triple H era. Um but I know that, you know, right now he's getting love in AEW. Um, I, they're supposed to have a match, Ricochet versus uh, Will Ospreay, which I think is going to be a banger of a match. I just feel like with him being in AEW, they need to take their time to really build him like this next top guy, if that's what they want him to be. Because we know Will Ospreay is the top guy right now for AEW. And I think... Even though that match is going to be fire, and I know a lot of people have their takes on it, I do think him and AEW can work, but they have to treat him like he's this ultimate star. Like they treat Will Ospreay. They treat Will Ospreay like he's the best guy in the company, and if you're trying to do that with Ricochet, you got to treat him that way. So you have to put him in matches, you know, high-profile matches, or get him some wins and 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 build upon that. Get him into a good storyline. I do think this match between Will Ospreay is a little too soon. I think they could really build off this and make a really big moment for Ricochet that he deserves. But nevertheless, we'll see how things play out. I just hope that they continue to make him feel like a big star, you know, because you know, I don't want him to get lost in the shuffle. I do think he's very talented. So we'll see how that plays out in AW. WWE Draft 2008. Whilst Jim Ross isn't officially a wrestler, he is known for never holding back in terms of his oh, emotions. He gonna tell it. The 2008 how you feel? draft was no exception. At the annual draft, JR would be drafted to SmackDown, whilst Michael Cole would be drafted to Raw. JR couldn't hide his anger with WWE's decision, and the fact that he wasn't even informed ahead of time of the planned move didn't exactly help the situation. According to JR on his podcast, Kevin Dunn informed him that he would be staying on Raw along with Jerry Lawler, so JR was under the impression that nothing was going to change. This was ultimately uh. a betrayal and would hardly come as a surprise as JR's sadness was a cause of hilarity backstage. Speaking about the infamous incident on his podcast, this is what JR had to say on the matter. So you always believe that Kevin lied to me, but there's also another side of the story to be objective. He may not have known. It may have been an overnight decision made by by Vince. He slept on it, got prodded. Well, JR said he didn't want to go to SmackDown. Oh, God, we'll show him that. Oh, God, nobody tells me what they're going to do. You know, kind of shit. So that was my anger was that, that I felt betrayed. And it would have been so simple, so simple for Vince to say, uh, uh, JR, Vince needs to see you. Monday afternoon, I go to Vince's office. She says, JR, I was going to tell you that uh, I am, uh, we're going to make some changes tonight. You may not like it, but let me tell you why we're doing it. I'm going to move you to SmackDown 
to work with Foley. You guys got great chemistry. Just want to freshen things up. We're going to move Cole over to uh, Rob, work with Jerry. We think it'll be, you know, I think it'll be a, the right thing to do. But we didn't have that conversation. Number eight. The un- and that's, that's understandable. You know, JR being a legend in the business and him just telling Vince, hey, I don't want to go to SmackDown. And it comes off like a power play, like, oh, you don't want to go to SmackDown. Oh, you're going to go to SmackDown because I said so. And then they didn't tell him. So he finding out in real time, like everybody else, it's just like, damn, that's kind of. So I can understand his visual frustration. Like, damn, bro, like, what are we doing? You could have. I'm not worthy of enough of a, a meeting or a phone call about this. So. Undertaker Super Showdown 2019. The Undertaker has always been a wrestler who takes immense pride in his work. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the majority of the Dead Man's matches during his final few active years in WWE were less than stellar, and even the WWE Hall of Famer has admitted it this himself. Without a doubt, the worst match of his final Ooh. years in WWE took place in 2019 at the Super Showdown pay-per-view against Goldberg. The match itself was an absolute disaster and is classed by many as one of the worst matches in modern day wrestling. The botches in this match included The Undertaker being dropped on his head, Goldberg being spiked on his head and both men falling over. The finish of the match came when The Undertaker proceeded to call an audible and finish off the match with a chokeslam. Taker looked incredibly disgusted and yeah. upset following the match and this was a man that was an expert at never breaking character mm -hmm. but the wave of negative emotion was just too much for him to handle. Pretty bad Number match, seven, man. The Rock Royal Rumble 2015. Uh, we know about this WWE infamous fans moment. fans have seen firsthand just how proactive The Rock is in handling bad booking. In 2024, The Rock was one of the main okay. names responsible for WWE cancelling the planned Rock vs. Roman Reigns match and moving forward with Cody Rhodes finishing his story at WrestleMania 40. The Rock was able to do this due to his involvement as a WWE board member, as well as his contractual obligations for WrestleMania 40. Almost a decade prior, The Rock firsthand witnessed such appalling booking from WWE that he decided <laughs> to legitimately walk out of the arena. The 2015 Royal Rumble match highlighted just how utterly out of touch Vince McMahon was. The match was seemingly booked to alienate the WWE audience as it received uh -huh. universal backlash and was so hated that a lot of WWE fans switched off the product immediately. In an attempt to get Roman Reigns over, they would book an angle which saw The Rock interfere on Reigns' behalf to help him take out fellow heels The Big Show and Kane. The smart fans, however, could see straight yep. through this and instantly rejected The Rock. When The Rock would hold up Reigns' arm at the end of the match, it suddenly dawned on The Rock that the fans were furious and he gave the crowd... Yeah, it, one of the most infamous pictures of him holding up uh, Roman's hand to hear the boos. Like, he was just like, damn that's 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 kind of damn what the fuck you know what i'm saying it, it, you rarely boo the rock R the rock rarely gets booed so it had to have been something obviously very substantial and very serious i hope one day whenever we do get this rock versus roman feud i hope the rock brings this up because obviously roman's going to be the baby face in this situation we're going to have the final boss version of the rock uh love that uh iteration of his character this new you know type version of his character fits him now but i hope he brings that up i hope he brings up the situation that he realized maybe he isn't the one because of this infamous night i hope he i don't know how he would tie it in but i hope they bring that up because essentially the rock tried to get roman over and he couldn't do it ah infamous moment man proud to look as to say i understand the incident upset the rock so much that he would leave the arena immediately after the match without saying a word to mcmahon the Rock had always been known for being Damn, a I didn't even know that. professional, so the fact that The Rock thought that this was the most appropriate course of action spoke volumes as to just how poorly the WWE executed the match. Number 6. Roman Reigns Raw 2017 WWE made the bold move of booking uh... Roman Reigns vs John Cena for the 2017 No Mercy event. This was a WrestleMania main event worthy match, yet this was a time in which WWE would do anything to get Reigns over, and they believed a win over Cena would help cement him as the face of the company. Unfortunately for the build to the No Mercy showdown, it greatly exposed Reigns. In all of the promo battles, Reigns was overshadowed by Cena, and in one now infamous promo exchange, Reigns lost his train of thought, oh, so yeah. Cena let him have it. Cena would break the silence by saying, go ahead, find it. I'll wait. It's called a promo. promo. If you want to be the big dog, you've got to know how to learn it. 
Reigns' entire demeanor changed, and it was evident that Reigns wasn't pleased that Cena had gone off script to embarrass him in such a humiliating way. Thankfully, years after this notable promo exchange, Reigns was allowed to turn heel, and in the years that followed, his promo game greatly improved, and some would even say that Reigns is one of the strongest promo guys in WWE right now. And I think he needed that. I know uh, people have said, oh, it was, part, it was part of the script for him to pretend not to remember. That's fine. If you want to believe that, I personally don't believe that. I think it just happened. He was, you know, young in his younger in his career, and he needed that because those are the moments that mold you. Those are the moments that make you who you are. And I'm glad that he he's able to give out more of his persona in these promos because that's what you want. Not everybody can do that. Some people do have to be scripted, but I feel like him. He doesn't need to be scripted. He can come off being his genuine self, and it worked. Now, anytime he ever talks, you believe everything he says because it fits his character. It feels like those are the words that he or saying that he's saying, not someone wrote for him. You know, so it, it it needed to happen. That moment needed to happen, and I'm glad it did because now we have a better Roman for it. You know. Now. Number five, Ronda Rousey, WrestleMania 35. Oh boy. The the WWE took center stage at WrestleMania 35 as Ronda Rousey, Charlotte Flair, and Becky Lynch became the first women to main event the WWE's premiere show. It should have only been two of them. Fine, the finish was heavily botched and it definitely impacted the overall reputation of the WrestleMania main event. The finish came when Lynch would counter a Piper's pit into a pin for the win. However, Rousey's shoulders were clearly off the mat. It's believed that this was an outright botch and wasn't the finish that WWE had in mind. Rousey was clearly enraged with the botch as immediately after the pinfall, she questioned what had happened. The camera even cut away from Rousey at one stage, which was a clear sign that this wasn't even planned. Rousey would discuss the botch during a 2024 interview with Chris Van Fleet, and Rousey hoped that WWE would use the botch in a way to build towards Rousey vs Lynch in a singles match. I didn't think my shoulders were flat on the ground, so I was trying to scoot to get my shoulders flat because it's so effing loud, I can't hear anything. I wanted to use that pin as, okay, this is how we lead into the next one. We bring it up on the Tron and say, you never got me, this is bullshit. The mm -hmm. referees are all in your pocket and put that into a singles between me and Becky that everybody wanted that got taken away. That would have been perfect. Four, Chris Jericho <laughs> and one of the few things that Ronda uh, was correct on, that would have been, I mean, she booked it better than Vince could have. I mean, that would have been perfect simple build a rematch the match that actually everybody wanted no one wanted charlotte inserted we could have got that one-on-one -on -one. that would have been the that ah, it's crazy bro all i'm saying is some of the stuff be so obvious it's simple you don't have to overbook to make a situation work bro there's nothing wrong with you know, per storyline, stacking a deck or whatever the case may be. But you don't have to overbook it to make a simple story work. Everybody wanted to see Ronda versus Becky. That's it. So. Survivor Series 2016. Whilst most of Shane McMahon's in-ring work was enjoyable, he was prone to getting carried away in the ring. This meant that McMahon could often yeah. be unintentionally stiff in the ring, and when McMahon decided to deliver stiff strikes to Chris Jericho at the 2016 oh, yeah, Survivor Series event, it was obvious to the audience that Jericho had just had enough. As McMahon's stiffness continued, mm -hmm. Jericho was getting more and more frustrated, and his facial expressions weren't shying away from the anger. Jericho would end up getting so frustrated with McMahon that he proceeded to deliver a legitimate drop kick to his face. Jericho would ultimately reveal that he had to tell McMahon to calm down, and when this wasn't working, he felt like he had no choice but to respond with his own form of physicality. Mm -hmm. Number three, Understandable. Drew McIntyre clash at the castle 2022. Our fans were convinced that Drew McIntyre was winning the undisputed title. It looked like it was. This is one of the few moments early in Roman Reigns title reign. It's so weird saying it like that. That it almost looked like they could pull the trigger here. I don't think many people would have tripped, but it it what this wasn't the time. It was so close. They this was probably one of the closer ones where you're like, maybe, but it wasn't the time. At Clash at the Castle 2022, McIntyre had been built up extremely well, and McIntyre was credible and popular enough to dethrone Roman Reigns. But WWE would have other ideas when it came to the match's outcome, as they had a debuting Solo Sokoa cost McIntyre the match, which was a booking call that still leads to discourse amongst fans. In one of the weirdest moves imaginable, they would book McIntyre to sing songs with Tyson Fury yeah. after his loss. 
This was unusual as McIntyre had just lost the biggest match of his life. Yeah. McIntyre was suddenly supposed to forget all this and act like everything was okay. Lucky for the legitimacy of his character, McIntyre didn't exactly shy away from how he truly felt. His face told the whole story as he was truly gutted that he lost and he clearly had no interest in singing along with Tyson Fury. When McIntyre I spoke to Cultaholic, he would label the moment as the worst moment of his life, and it's easy to see why. I was so happy getting Clash in Wales and getting the first stadium show since SummerSlam 92 and getting the main event. I wasn't happy getting screwed and the worst moment of my life as singing that stupid song afterwards. Number two, John C I mean, obviously part of the story, it, it's just, you know, obviously uh drew kind of playing in the character with that, which I do appreciate. Uh, I'm trying to keep a little bit of the kayfabe alive. But yeah, man, I mean, it wasn't his time to lose. That's literally what it come down to. It just wasn't his time to lose yet, so. Cena WrestleMania 28. WrestleMania 28 features an iconic shot of John Cena sitting on the ramp. Cena had just been defeated mm -hmm. by The Rock, and his body language showed a story of Fun disappointment match. and contemplation. Once in a lifetime, the Rock right? Defeating Cena came as a huge surprise to fans, as nobody had any idea that WWE planned on delivering a rematch, so it made sense that the full time face of the company, that being Cena, would win the match. Yeah. According to former WWE referee Mike Kyoda, uh. Cena sourpussed over losing to the Great One on the grandest stage. In relation to why Cena had such an issue with losing, this is what the legendary referee had to say during an appearance on ad-free shows. I think Cena had a little bit of a problem doing the job because here's Cena carrying the torch for the last 10 years at that time. He was busting his ass day in day out. Here comes The Rock back after so many years of being in Hollywood and he's got to job out to The Rock. <laughs> of course, the show is in Miami. The Rock is a big Hollywood yeah. superstar now. There was a little heat there. I think that there was a little dissension, but you have to go where the money goes. Uh -huh. So they put Rock over, and I was happy about that. I felt bad for John in a way. Knowing that Cena was unhappy with putting over the Rock certainly paints an entirely different story to Cena's emotion at the end of the match. Mm. And number one, Rock and it's just one of those things where it's like, and then we got twice in a lifetime. I was like, oh, okay, okay. Do I have a problem with the Rock winning? No. It just it made sense because the story you can tell, even though I. I can understand why John would feel that way. The story you can tell is simple, which they should have did. The downfall of John Cena, that loss changed him. That loss changed him to the point where he starts doing, he starts getting more heel-like. He's more aggressive. You know, you could have really built something. That loss changed him. And it turned him into a, a more vicious version of him and you could then build the rematch like nah i need to get my rematch because i took you lightly i took you as a joke i don't take no one lightly now i destroy people that could have been something good but they didn't do that <laughs> so you know you know how that goes man roman reigns wrestlemania 40 <laughs> The historic 1,360-day Roman Reigns world title reign would come to a dramatic uh, end at WrestleMania 40. Reigns would be defeated by Cody Rhodes in the main event of night two of the show, moment. and the match received critical acclaim, and many considered the match to be the perfect ending to the epic reign. Reigns had put so much into the reign that yeah. he was given that it would be an emotional night for him, and after the match, Reigns was so overcome with emotion that he had to be comforted by his manager and real-life friend, Paul Heyman. WWE didn't air this footage, although they mm -hmm. did capture it in some capacity, so it's probably going to be used for a documentary down the line. With that being said, fans in attendance managed to capture video footage uh -huh. at the moment, and it's hard to watch without getting emotional. There you have it, folks. Ten times. He, he put the company on his back, bro. He put the company on his back, and, you know, we had some of the best entertainment through the Roman Reigns and the bloodline and everything that they created with that story, man. So I'm just, you know... One of those things where we're very thankful. We appreciate that title reign. It wasn't all great. Towards the end, it started to get pretty repetitive and stale because he had beaten everybody. But you can tell he gave everything he had to make sure that that reign was the best possible reign it could ever be. And he did. He elevated the Universal Championship, the Blueberry Belt. He put some prestige on that belt. He added more prestige to the WWE Championship. And, you know, it's, it's going to go down as one of the greatest title reigns of all time. Like, kids growing up watching this, they will be able to say Roman Reigns had the greatest title reign of all time because they may not obviously know about the past ones, the Hulk Hogan's and the Brunos of the world. But they're going to be able to say that, and there's nothing wrong with that, man. So this was a pretty good video. 
some stuff I didn't know that, you know, how wrestlers were, you know, really fit feeling if the reports are true, but comment down below. Let me know if y'all remember any other instances of wrestlers where they couldn't fake their emotions, whether it was, you know, laughter, where they were upset. You could tell uh, another good one is Kofi Kingston and Randy Orton, that whole situation where, uh, that, you know, Randy ended up, uh calling him stupid 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 like he was mad because the whole punt kick situation like he was upset you can visibly see he was upset that's that's another good one uh if you guys remember remember but i appreciate all love support road to 150k appreciate y'all kicking with me see you on the next one peace